This is George Dion of the Rock is George podcast, and this is a KNAC.com exclusive interview with Anders L.A. Ronblom of the Swedish hard rock supergroup Social Disorder. If I knew absolutely nothing about Social Disorder, how would you describe the band's music to me? Oh, classic uh, hard rock melodic with uh, um, uh, classical influences like Rainbow, early Rainbow, um, Purple, Malmsteen, early White Snake, basically MSG. Absolutely, all of those rolled into one. They rolled into one, yeah, totally wrapped up and with uh, big uh, background vocals that actually got a, a feel of gospel to them definitely on one song and i'm definitely going to touch on that song as well uh first i wanted to uh point out that social distort social disorder got their start in 2018 it's an all-star project how did you originally put this thing together we toured with killer b with uh done so and bullet boys in 2015 kept in contact and and um I started to write songs about my journey, about my, to my sobriety and that, and, and had nothing to do with Killer B. And I realized that I actually went back to all the basics about like the bands I talked about that didn't have anything to do with Killer B. And one song after another just fell into place. And then I decided, okay, who am I going to do this with? So I just reached out to Tracy, I sent him a, a, a mail, I reached out to Rudy, and everybody else, and and it all fell into place. So that's how it all started. And back in 2021, you released "Love to Be Hated," and you're yeah. back now with your follow up release, "Time to Rise." It comes out February 23rd on Pride and Joy Music. The yeah. first album had over a dozen guest spots on it. This album is about half that. It's it's Thomas Norden, Tracy Guns, Rudy Sarzo, Sean Duncan. Leaf, Elon, and Dave Stone. This is the core of social disorder at this point. That's true. That's true. Um, because uh, now Trace is doing all the the, the guitars. I mean, I mean, we had Jeff Duncan doing guitars from Armored Saint on one song, and we had Frederick Chanel do on that instrumental song, Wings of Serenity. But uh, now Trace does all the tracks, and Rudy do like eight. I, I got more songs that haven't been put on the album, so uh, yeah. So it's the it's the core basically right now. So the only guest is Björn Englund, bass player who played with Malmsteen before, and he also played with Soul Sign now with Mark Bowles, I believe. I know that uh, your first album was mainly put together by yourself, bringing in the musicians to do their certain parts. Does mm -hmm. Time to Rise give more of a role to the all star portion of the band? Nope. <laughs> uh, no, actually, uh, when, when uh, Love to Be Hated was re released in June 2021, uh, Time to Rise was already written in, in August 2021. So re the recording started in September 2021. I had all the ideas laid down and everything. So I did it in the same way. I, I sent them, the, I did the, the pre production on the songs and I sent them out to, to them and they added their like I said, the spice or the attitude and, and how they interpret the songs to them. But I mean, there's nothing changed in, in the arrangements more than, than that what they have added to it, so to speak. You mentioned that Love to Be Hated was about your personal journey. Uh, what is there anything significant about Time to Rise? Yeah, it is actually, you know, after you have, that was my journey to find this sobriety and time to rise is basically when the hardest part comes in, kicks in is that when you have to adapt to live by that and, and everything that uh, comes with it, the responsibilities that you didn't give a rat's ass about before. Now you have to get, get in line, so to speak. And, and, but it also, uh, since I'm working with, with this kind of problems in my private life, um, I see so many people ending up on the wrong side and it can it can be by a divorce or a disease or financial situation or unemployment etc and and it's all about to uh, fight and, and believe in yourself and, and try to pull it together 
Well, let's talk about the lyrical inspiration behind your single Time to Rise. Yeah, uh, that's basically about, you know, if you read it, it's, it's a little bit biblical and, and religious to tone set to it. But it, it's also that, that it's, um, I want people to interpret the, the, the lyrics and, and, and implement them to themselves and what they have gone through, for instance. I mean, you can have the, you can go through hell or high water and, and it's time to rise and don't blame anyone else. Don't be jealous. Fight for what you, you think is good. Fight for your relationship. It's your kids or, or et cetera like that. So it's basically, you can say it's metaphorically as well. Now you mentioned sort of these gospel aspects to your music. Dancing in the Rain is a perfect example of that. That song absolutely wowed me. If you want to talk a little bit about that song. Oh, that, that, okay. That, that's um, the last song that actually was written. Um, and, and I just wrote it one night by the piano. And that was the, the feel that when when you feel that you are basically giving up, you, you're just by yourself and you, you, you don't know where you're going to stand and who am I going to talk to and, and how I'm going to put things together. But usually if you, somebody asks you, say they say, how are you doing? And you say, I'm doing fine. But if they would say, well, it's not so good. You have 50 minutes. They're going to say, oops, I got to go. And and that's and then I see a lot of uh, the the health uh, psychological health in in here in Sweden, how bad it is, and and it's basically a scream for help. And everybody wants to feel good, and everybody uh, wants to be dancing in the rain. So so it was just mainly written by Pierre. I sent it to Thomas. Thomas started to work on the vocals on that uh, the the arrangements the gospel thing and he uh, Thomas is also the one who did the cello in the beginning of the song so we just kept it by a cello a piano a Rudy on, on the bass and trace on guitar do you have a third single plan to release from the album no we don't have a third single plan to release from now because it's going to be released on the third but we are definitely having a third video plan to be released just spoke about that today, but actually you're the second one who knows about it because I decided today it's gonna and it's gonna be forged in fire. Another great song from the album, might I say. Thank you. Is it tough picking singles when you're kind of tied to the whole album as them all being your babies, trying to pick the ones that you think are gonna bring the people in? Uh yeah, it is, because you always get the personal favorites. And because each and every song has, uh, you have a personal relationship to them and why they came the way, how they worked out, etc. So, yeah, it is. It is tough. I had to pick first. I, I wanted to do Free Your Spirit. And, and me and Thomas, we spoke today and, and we said, maybe it's going to be a little bit, that's a song that's pretty long and it's also, a lot of build up, build up in that song, so you need to listen to it a couple of times before you it reaches to you. So we decided decided to time to rise was a good one to take off as well as the second ones. Let's go with Fortune Fire. The album's being released through Pride and Joy Music. How did you sign with the label? I, I, I knew about uh, um, the owner Birgit uh, since before because she she was on AOR Heaven in Germany. Uh, uh, that label and, and, and that's how I, I came across her. The album's going to be available on CD and streaming formats. Is there a chance for a vinyl at this juncture? Uh, what I did and, and planned and I prepared for is that uh, the, the album is mastered and ready to go if we want to do vinyl because it's two different ma mastering processes to, to do that. So I prepared for vinyl if you're going to come to it. The first album was released through AFM Records. Did Was there an issue that they didn't want the second album, or was it just a one-album deal? No, it, the thing was that, that that they had an option for a second one, but they were bought up by, I, I think it was, I believe, Music, that, that big, huge streaming services, and uh, they made a lot of changes, so therefore they, we parted. Because of that, so they they didn't probably didn't see that they we were that fit for them at the moment. They kept the bigger ones and, and instead of like building up. So, but they're lost. I uh, 
I've actually heard the 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 behind the scenes story about AFM right now that the company that that bought them out is buying up a couple labels and they yeah. they want to focus strictly on streaming. They don't want to do yeah. physical media or stuff like that. And it's actually cost AFM a couple of big artists like Udo Dirk Schneider for one. Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, all all these streaming things is basically killing so much because you don't have the. I mean, I, I remember when, when Maiden was coming out. They toured with Kiss in 1980 through Europe. And they and they were on every club or every place Kiss played because they were on the the on the posters and they were mentioned in magazines and etc. And it, then you had a physical sa- sale of, of albums and that's how you kept the bands and they were be, be, be able to build them up. But at the moment there is like no financial muscle behind the streaming uh, compared to the the vinyl uh, oh, physical sales like the vinyls so i mean i said it over and over i mean if maiden would come out today they wouldn't make it guns and roses wouldn't make it no one would make it because there there's a tsunami of music that comes out on streaming services that i mean i remember when i was younger you could read the magazines august uh, from EMI, for instance, you could read what albums came out in September, October, and you could actually go into the record store and you could pick them from the shelf and listen to them and you can buy them or not, whatever. But I mean, that was that kind of update. Today, there's like, if, if that would be the same thing with vinyls and you were addicted to buy vinyls, you, you basically have to put, it, put a bed, a stove, and a fridge in the, the record store because you would never be able to leave from there. That's how much it's released right now. And I, I, I say like, um, when, when uh, who's gonna come up from behind now? When when the big bands are are gonna leave soon? Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, what, what is it? Is it the Rob Halford is seventy two or something? They, they, I mean, they, they, it's like no one's coming in that kind of, of um, uh, caliber of bands. I'm sorry to say, but it's not that kind of. Uh, feel that you you have the audience that listen for us like, like us us uh, white stick when they came I saw I saw Rainbow Eight One in Stockholm and I, that was like mind blowing and and listen all these bands but you don't have that kind of tradition anymore unfortunately I don't think the comeback of vinyl is going to last very long either as we sure. watch the prices rise higher and higher for yeah. albums that came out forty years ago yeah yes yeah, yeah seen that and. Here's the thing. I mean, people. Everything that is for free is good, right? But 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 I mean, th- that's what's killing the the industry as well. I mean, you 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 have a subscription a subscription on Spotify for about twenty dollars a month, and the amount of music you're getting for twenty dollars a month. Why the heck would you go and buy a vinyl for twenty five dollars? Uh, that that's that's makes no sense. So. Um, the streaming thing will will continue and and um, unfortunately i think it's going to kill the music sooner or later on your latest album fantastic new uh album artwork you got this gladiator angel who was the artist that designed the uh, album cover his his name is michael vetter and he's from germany uh he's uh, totally fantastic uh, you give him the ideas and and he has t- Try to find things out, and and it's and, and that's so symbolic also for time to rise. That's what it's all about. Fight for the good thing. It depends on what it is. If, if it's your relationship, if it's for your job, is it against the disease? And that's all what it's all about. You got a fantastic singer in Thomas Norden. Great voice. Uh, this is really the the only project I've ever seen him tied to. Uh, how did you find? Thomas, how did you discover him? <laughs> that, this is a really fun story. You know, we're, we're living in a very small town, and um, Leif Feline, uh, who's an old friend of mine, he's playing in Perfect Plan. Uh, he, um, when he heard the, the song "Dreaming" the f- first time, uh, the idea that I had because I sing the ideas on the songs, and and he said like, "You you need to call Thomas," and I said, "Thomas, yeah." Thomas Nudin. I said, I don't know who he is. But he's been playing with us on these cover nights. And I said, nope, I haven't heard about him because that was during my era of drinking. So I didn't go out that much. So I called him up 
and introduced myself. And, and because Leif had said, he said, Jolin Turner, David Coverdale, boom, early. And I go like, okay, that's pretty promising if, if, if it's true. But I was like, mm. all right. So I called him up and I introduced myself and I sent over the, the song Dreaming. And I think it was like five days later, I got it back and he was like, is this okay? And I go like, you must be kidding me. So the thing, the deal we had was like, he was just supposed to do three songs initially. And for each song, we just started to grow a, a relationship with, with the music and that. So boom, they were. And then it was the second album. So, yeah, no, fantastic singer. And he's he's a lot into soul and gospel. Fantastic uh, uh, person and, and, and uh, arranger about in the music scene with the gospel and soul music in town. But I had no clue <laughs> until now. So with such an all-star project, there probably isn't a chance for Social Disorder to perform live. But is there possibly an avenue for you to get together with Thomas and maybe a couple other guys to go out live and perform the songs? Absolutely. That 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 uh, if it would come if it would come down to it, we could do that. But I I, I, I would still insist. Uh, um, hope and hope that maybe we, we could, would be able to do like uh, some festival shows, you know, fly in, fly out things uh, instead of, we would never be able to, I, I don't see us being going on the road to do like a, a tour or something, but I mean uh, Trace is very very busy with his projects and and, and, and mainly his uh, baby LA Guns, which I totally understand where, where Sean is playing as well and then you have Rudy's out with Quiet Riot a lot. So let's say if we would be asked, we were probably going to need like two years heads up before we would, would be able to fit in a, a thing. But I mean, we should never say never because you never know how things turn out. And and, and um, I mean, it's great. And uh, personally, me and Thomas have spoken about it. And, and it's too good to not be perform live. But it wouldn't be the same without the other guys. That's the thing. You'll have to find like a rock cruise in which they're all booked and then try to jump on the uh, the cruise ship with them. <laughs> I'm surprised them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I th- I, and also a big thing, uh, like I said to Thomas, I said, now you have done all these amazing back, uh, background vocals arrangements. So what we would need if we would go up, because I totally refuse to have uh, what's called backing tracks that will never happen that's over my dead body so that, then we would need basically like three uh, uh, background vocals to, to do this otherwise it would, because that would lose so much momentum if we didn't wouldn't pull that off and, and have it with a backing track that's that wouldn't be us so Thomas is totally anti auto tune because he never uses it he's like totally straight when he sings He's like he's so old school when it comes down to to the singing. He's really, really insanely professional. Outside of social disorder, I saw you have another project called X Romance. You've put out a album or two with them. Uh, how does that band differ from Social Disorder? Oh, that's like a real AOR, like eighties, big time eighties. We had this band uh, in the eighties, and and we I had all these songs on cassette tapes. And I found them in my barn. Uh, this was like the last thing we did was 1989. And then we just wrapped it up. And we did a vinyl, actually, uh, a four-track vinyl. I think it's very, very rare to get a hold of. And and uh, I put everything in, in the barn. And I spoke to this guy in Stockholm that I played with, that we had this band with. And I said, you know what? I found all these tracks. So basically on that album, all the tracks are from 1987, 86, 87, 88. So we re-recorded them. And now we have uh, we have still like five tracks from that era. So we are going to add another five, six new tracks to it. So we, we, we are working on, on a release for that and hopefully the end of 2024. Awesome. And you, yeah. picked, you picked up a new singer along the way, right? Yeah. Christian Bengtsson, a really, really good singer. He's a really good hard rock singer from Stockholm. I mean, he does purple like like no one else. There's like an Ian Gillen. 
really, really good singer. So, but it, it's it's going to be it's really fine what he did. Great guy. You mentioned uh, the band in the beginning of this interview, Killer B. That you and yeah. Brian Frank have you guys ever talked about doing something new under that banner? Uh, we always when we talk, we, we always get back to if we're going to do something or not. But I mean, he's busy on his end with he's got a, some some project going on, and and uh, uh, I got now I got social disorder and I got ex romance that I want to finish before I go further with anything else. So it felt like we we did the the album. 2019 called Remember the Times and, and the title basically says a lot about that, right? That's like a closure name, Remember the Times. <laughs> sometimes sometimes you can't go back, right? No, that's, it's true. It's true. <laughs> Are you working on any other music projects? I know you produce, so do you have anything going on right now? Yeah, I also do I write a lot of Swedish music. Uh, I released a, an album um uh, about what was it? Three or four years ago, yes, Swedish songs like pop, mm, traditional Swedish music, and I written like ten songs of that. But I will see when I can fit that in. So that that's so I got like four, three bands now that I'm juggling. So, but the main thing now is now I, I come to to the sort of the sort of release. So now I can focus on the ex romance recordings. I've done the bass tracks on it already, so we're just going to touch up with the guitar play and that, so we get that those things done. You uh, talked about your your life uh, as a sober person. How long uh, have you been sober? Fourteen years. Fourteen. Congratulations. Thank you. Does the music, you know, making music and being a part of the music, kind of keep you busy? So you know that that becomes your new main focus, or is there yeah, something- I. Yeah, basically, I said that the, the music is like my therapist. That's how I can because that's how I can express myself, uh, and, and uh, it's very important that I have music. Because I said that because I, I took a break from the music, and that's when things went south. So when when I put put myself together and, and started playing music again, everything fell into place. I think a lot of musicians get kind of caught up in that, either alcohol or substance abuse and stuff like that. Yeah. Would you, yeah. do you have any specific advice for someone that's trying to trying to get out of that? Um, talk to somebody. Basically, you have to uh, just just open, you have to be very open with things. And, and uh, I don't know how to explain it in English, but I mean, you always say that you're going to show your throat so you can so you can get a slit if if. But but it, it's um, yeah yeah you need to if you if you really want to do a change. Then I would recommend rehab in some way, uh, and, and speci- specifically talk to people and don't feel ashamed about your situation because that's a lot of, a lot of things. To be ashamed of, of your situation is usually the biggest stopper to proceed because you don't want to talk about it. You, you're living in a denial thing at the same time. So talk about it and and try to get out of the system and and. Because you, ninety nine percent of the times, everybody around you knows about it. It's just you that thinks that they don't have a clue. So it's much, actually it's much easier than you think to be open with it. Because when it's as soon as it's up in in the open, then then it's just there's nothing to to dwell about. Indeed. Well, yeah. those are all the questions I have for you today, Anders. The new social disorder album. Time to Rise comes out February 23rd through Pride and Joy Music. Another fantastic album. The first one was great. You did it again on this one. And thanks for taking the time to talk more about it. Thanks for having me. And great to talk to you again. Yeah, absolutely, man. I'm sure we'll talk again in the future. I'm pretty sure in a year and a half. (laughs) 